Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible and turn it to the book of Isaiah. We're going to do Isaiah chapter 3. All right, let's go to read... I guess we'll read the chapter and then I'll show you some of the corresponding parts of the Bible after. The third chapter of Isaiah roughly translates to the third book of the Bible, which would be the book of Leviticus. Levi was the tribe that the Lord gave no inheritance to. Moses was of the tribe of Levi, and they were to take care of the tabernacle. They were the ones that were to perform services for the Lord. All right, want some proof? Exodus 4.14. Now, just remember, Moses had... Um, He's trying to get out of what the Lord had sent him to do, and he's basically saying, you know, I'm not a good talker, Lord, and you want me to go talk to Pharaoh. So let's see what the Lord says here. Exodus 4 and verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? So Aaron is the brother of Moses, and he's a Levite. Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, and also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. All right, in the book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 50, we read, But thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it, they shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle setteth forward, the Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. Yeah, you didn't want a stranger playing around with God's tabernacle. Eventually, the tabernacle was replaced by the temple. So, let's skip to verse 53. But the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, that there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel, and the Levites shall keep the charge. In other words, they're going to be in charge. And the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony. Numbers 3, 6. Bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron the priest that they may minister unto him. Now, I mentioned in a previous study that you couldn't even be a priest or a serve the Lord in the tabernacle until you were 25. That's found in Numbers 8 and verse 24. This is it that belongeth unto the Levites, from twenty and five years old and upward, they shall go in to wait upon the service of the congregation, I'm sorry, wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. So, you had to be twenty-five years old to serve the Lord as a Levite. So, the Lord wanted a certain amount of maturity, so he didn't want no 15-year-olds running around. Um, I imagine they probably started training them quite young. So by the time they were 25, they were well-trained. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 3. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread, and the whole stay of water. What did Jesus say about being the bread of life? 
What did Jesus say about living water? We'll get back to that. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. Now, an artificer would be um, somebody that does like engraving for maybe a, you know, a metal engraver, maybe for art, maybe for implements of war, like a sword perhaps. And what's an orator? Somebody that speaks well. Verse 4, And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. If you're talking about a base person, you're talking about a somebody of very low class that acts like doesn't have any doesn't have any class. A base person, you know, somebody that's loud, rude, uncultured. So that kind of person is going to be against the honorable. Verse 6. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. Listen carefully. For Jerusalem is ruined, and uh, Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord. Because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance does, doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be wi ill with him. For the reward of his hands shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Hmm. This is a curse, people. Children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor? Saith the Lord God of hosts. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. So I guess they got bells on their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will, will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls, and their round tires, 
like the moon. Huh. You didn't know they had Goodyear tires back then, huh? Or Firestone. I know, poor joke. And they're round tires like the moon. The chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets, and the earrings. The rings and nose jewels. Huh. What do you think of that? They had nose jewels back in them days. The changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins. The glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. Uh, we're not talking about paying a landlord money month to month. When they're talking about a rent, they're talking about a tear in, you know, the clothing. And instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a grinding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty, thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she shall be desolate, and she, being desolate, shall sit upon the ground. All right, in Isaiah 3, we read in verse 1, For behold, the Lord the Lord of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread, and the whole stay of water. Well, in John 7, 38, in John 7, 38, right, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall ro flow rivers of living water. In Revelation 7 and verse 17, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, remember they talked about bread? Mark 14, 22. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. In John six thirty five, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. All right, the third chapter of Isaiah roughly corresponds to the third book of the Bible, which is Leviticus. So let's go to Leviticus 26, 26. Well, let's go to verse 23. And if ye will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary to me, then will I also walk contrary unto you. In other words, if you're not going to walk with the Lord, but walk against the Lord, he's going to walk against you. Then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when, you're, when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered un into the hand of the enemy. Verse 26. And when I have broken the staff of your bread... Famine, people. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. In other words, you're going to still be hungry. So, let's take a look. Where is the other verse? In Isaiah 3.1, For behold, the Lord... The Lord of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah 
the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread. In Isaiah 3.14, uh, the Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people. And then it says, For ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor, in your houses. Now, in Leviticus 19.10, um, it says, thou sh And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of the vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord your God. In other words, when you reap your crops, they were to leave the borders unpicked for the poor and for those that didn't have any land so that they could have something to eat. Very important. Think any of the rich people do that today? No. Uh, let's see. In Isaiah 3 and verse 26. And her gates shall lament mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Is there a corresponding verse in Leviticus? How about Leviticus 26 and verse 43? The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them. Remember, Judah was taken into captivity by Babylon for 70 years. That was 10 Sabbaths. Every seventh year there was a Sabbath and you were to let the land lie fallow, you know, not plant any crops. And the Lord promised in the sixth year you'd have a double bumper crop that would carry you through until the eighth year, harvest time. So, and they found, agricultural experts have found that letting the ground sit uh, rejuvenates it. So, all right, verse 43, Leviticus 26, 43. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them, and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despised my judgments and because their soul abhorred or hated my statutes. There you go. Matter of fact, let's read Leviticus 26. This is a really, oh boy. Ye shall make no idols, nor graven image, neither rear up an standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Well, what do Catholics do? They carve a, an image of a woman and they call her Mary and then they say she's the mother of God and then they bow down before her with rosary beads in her hands and they pray I mean really this is why they don't want you to read the Bible verse 2 now remember Christ is our Sabbath verse 2 ye shall keep my Sabbaths, Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary I am the Lord if, if ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall reach unto the vin uh, vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely." And I will give you peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. These evil beasts, are they four-legged or are they two-legged beasts? Verse 7. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. 
For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. In other words, uh, before you even run out of your old food, you're going to have new food coming in from your crops and stuff. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor or hate you. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke, and made you go upright. But here's the punchline. Here's America and Europe today. But if ye will not hearken unto me, oh, you're not going to listen to me? But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Guess what, people? China's buying up all our farmland. China's buying up all our uh, food produ producers. Smithfield Farms, the largest pork producer in the world. Guess who owns it? Take three guesses and the first two don't count. It's not an American company anymore. Verse 17, And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall they that hate you shall reign over you. Uh, can you take a hint? Yeah. Is that happening today? You betcha. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. Guess what? Iron does not produce rain. And you can't grow crops in brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if you will walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, two-legged ones, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then I will also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when, you're, when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence, that's disease, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of your enemies. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight. And ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you, uh, unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. Listen to this, people. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. Ye shall eat. Cannibalism. You know what, people? I have heard. I haven't 100% checked it out to be true. 
but some I keep hearing reports that when you see natural flavors on a food item, that it could mean fetal tissue. I mean, they have FedEx trucks going to these abortion clinics every day for pickups. What are they picking up? Are they sending out packages? What's inside the packages? Cannibalism, people, it's coming. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. My soul shall hate you. And I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will not smell the Savior of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land unto desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths, as long as it lieth desolate, and ye shall be in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rest, and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when ye dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the land of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them. And they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. In other words, the Bob translation would be, they're going to be scared of a shaking leaf. Verse 37. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword, when none pursueth. And ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. And ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. Now, what's the remedy? Verse 40. If they shall confess their iniquity, their sins, and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised heart be humbled, and they then accept of their punishment of their iniquity. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbaths, while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despise my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God, but I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of, their, in the, sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and law which the Lord made between them and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Wow. That, people, is a mouthful. All right, that's the end of part three. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.